Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 60 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we looked at the basic introduction to uh, Pandas, which is the data handling data analysis uh, library in Python. Now in this tutorial, let's uh, look at uh, handling data in Pandas. And again, specifically I'm referring to uh, inserting, deleting columns and uh, rows. So let's jump in. As usual, I have uh, the code pre-written so we can focus on what it means rather than trying to uh, focus on writing the code. Okay, so uh, I did explain this uh, data frame in my previous tutorial, but if you haven't watched uh, it, I definitely recommend going back and watching it. But uh, let me quickly summarize it uh, right now. So first of all, we are importing pandas as pd. pd is the shortcut for our, uh, our short name for our pandas. And now I'm using pandas.readcsv uh, method to read my manual versus auto.csv file, which is located in my data folder. Okay, once we do that, it creates a data frame. And when we open the data frame, you can see that, okay, it automatically assigned an index. And in the last tutorial, we looked at how we can uh, move our image column or make our image column to be our index because image is also uh, contains unique information about that specific row. Okay, uh, and uh, these are all again, uh, the nuclei counting result uh, on uh, uh, 100 different images that are separated into set one, set two, set three, and set four, okay? And the first column here, manual, refers to a manual counting by person number one. Manual two is by person number two, who uh, gave up after the first three images, and then the automated ways, the next three columns. So this is a good uh, overview of the data we are dealing with. Now, the manual two is useless because there are only three entries, so we should probably drop or delete this column. So let's uh, look at how we can do that. The way you can uh, delete or drop a column is just by df.drop. Obviously, we're not doing anything to the original CSV file, right? Everything is data manipulation within pandas uh, inside the Python environment. So you're not modifying the original CSV unless you overwrite it. Uh, so uh, the way you drop it is just your import, I mean, use your data frame, right? I mean, df dot drop and manual two is the column that we would like to drop. Okay, you can drop multiple column, uh, columns. And again, whenever you drop multiple columns, you uh, supply that as a list inside df dot drop. In fact, I have that example down here, but let's focus up uh, here for now. And then you define the axis. Axis equals to one refers to the column. Axis equals to zero is a row, okay? Then it def uh, deletes only a single row, which we'll see later on, but let's just uh, go ahead and execute this. And by the way, I'm assigning this to a new data frame called df1. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. And if I open my df1, you should see I only have manual and manual two is gone. This is how you should clean up your data. Like I showed you in the previous tutorial, first of all, first step of cleaning up your data is getting the column names right. So by renaming your unnamed zero to a set index or set title or something that makes sense to you. And then uh, taking care of the columns, only import the ones that you care about and drop all the ones that uh, do not uh, provide you any insights about uh, what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Now, that was only one column. Now, you can actually drop multiple columns. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, all you got to do is df.drop manual auto2 and auto3. So we only have manual and one auto. That's it. Okay. And access equals to one. Typically, when I drop all of these, I assign it to a new data frame because maybe I want to access my original data frame for some other type of information. Okay, so that's why uh, it, it, it can definitely help. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, run this and look at DF2. This is just your image name, set name, manual versus auto. So if you are looking at, okay, what is the correlation between manual versus auto, then this can be a good way of starting, okay? Now, uh, we learned about deleting the columns. Now, let's have a, a quick look at inserting the new columns, right? So how do you insert new columns? Well, in fact, uh, we'll probably look at that in one of the upcoming tutorials, but if you have another Excel sheet or a CSV file, import that as a different data frame and then select uh, some of the columns and then you can merge, you can uh, concatenate and you can do all kinds of stuff. But right now we are just talking about, okay, just insert a new column, fill it with a predefined value, okay? 
to do that uh, again we are reading we already have this let's go ahead and remove all variables and start uh, over again okay meaning we are importing pandas and we are reading the csv file and you know how the csv file should look like um, again it should look like pretty much uh, like this uh, with uh, seven columns now let's include add a column that says date and then inserts this specific value okay let's change this to 2020 i don't know some date uh, let's say july uh, whatever uh, 15th for example and uh, go ahead and run this and now if you open your data frame you can see that it added a column called date and it filled it with a specific value i just filled it with specific value and i put it in quotations which means that is added as a text and not as a, uh, a date format in fact let's just do print or data frame dot d types again it shows you all the data types of each column and you see my date is an object and object is text okay object basically is it's not an integer it's not a floating point it's not even a date time format now in pandas there is something called date time format so to convert your text into date time all you need to do is which column do you want to convert to df date equals to pd dot to date time okay it's just two underscore date time and then just provide uh, 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 you know whatever uh, value you would like to convert uh, let's go ahead and uh, paste this here and let's run this line and now your date time uh, this column is added as a date time now if I open this it should let me just expand this a bit more so you can see now it is in the date time format and it says your uh, you know year month date and you can change that if you want you can change the order to month year date and all that stuff go ahead and google search for that i'm going to show you only the basic uh, at a high level and then hopefully you can dig into those uh, uh, for some more details on these topics and it also included like uh, uh, looks like hours minutes and seconds and you can strip this if you want the hour minutes and seconds this can be useful for example, if you are maintaining an online, I don't know, e-commerce business and uh, you want to see at what time do most people do their shopping, online shopping, and uh, then your date is important, for example, to see, oh, are they doing more shopping on Saturday or Tuesday or Monday? And also the timestamp is also important. But for most analysis, the timestamp may not be important, but that's something you can do. Okay, and when you do your D types, now it should say uh, date time 64, and this tells you that, okay, this is in the right uh, format. Okay, what else, uh, what should we do? Uh, of course, we added all these date time. Let's say you add a, a bit more data. Now you wanna save this as a, 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 another CSV file. All you gotta do is df.2csv. Yeah, so you see two date time and when we actually uh, read it's read underscore CSV. So it's almost like reading English. Yeah, so you're doing two CSV and then just give the location. That's it. It should it should go ahead and save it as a CSV file. OK, um, now let's look at deleting rows. Most of the time you may not be deleting rows because rows represent the actual data that you have collected or uh, you know in this case the counting or something you oftentimes you delete rows okay because your row entire row may be useless but there may be times of course i'm not referring to rows where you have uh, null data i'll talk about that in the next tutorial but uh, if you want to delete a specific row I highly discourage you from doing that. You better have a very strong reason, especially for scientific image or data analysis. Be careful when you delete something specific, okay? That, uh, uh, and, and you need to justify why you're deleting an actual data point, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, let's clean up the screen again. So we start from scratch and let's do our import pandas and then reading the data frame. And now to drop it, you can actually drop a specific row by providing the index, right? Remember, if you have your index as 0, 1, 2, 3, you just say, okay, uh, index 1 is the second one here, okay? So now you can just go ahead and uh, do that. And now your data frame, up, if you look up here, instead of 100, you only have 99 data points. 
And if you open this and this, you see the number one is gone. The index is not changing. It's not like Excel where everything is go, you know, when you delete it and then it goes from zero, one to three again. Here you can tell that, okay, your index one is missing, okay? So that's a good way of uh, actually deleting your specific rows. But if you want to delete a chunk of it, it's it's like it's like NumPy. You just tell okay from what to what. Or uh, in this example, I'm just doing uh, df dot iloc. iloc uh, is basically it's locating using your row numbers. Okay. So basically, say uh, uh, ten. Uh, uh, the first 10 and then uh, keep everything else. So that's what this line stands for. So if you go ahead and do this, and now let's look at the head, df.head, it should start at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Of course, you can always go back to uh, your data frame, df, and then you see it starts, it removed zero to nine and it's starting at 10, 11, 12, and so on. So this is how you remove your, uh, uh, your rows. Uh, and uh, yeah, this could be also important. Uh, let's say you have your data frame here and you say, okay, you are okay with all, uh, for example, set two, set three, set four, but uh, you wanna drop all the rows that uh, belong to set one because you realize that uh, you forgot to calibrate your experiment. Uh, whatever that means. If it's a microscopy, you forgot to take the uh, power reading of your light source or uh, you forgot to, uh, you know, adjust your or read the beam current, you know, on your electron microscope. It could be anything. Depending on the experiment, you made you made a mistake and you don't care about that set, but other sets are okay. So to delete this entire thing, all you got to do is uh, create a new data frame in this example, DF1, which equals to the original data frame where the data frame with column name unnamed zero is not equals to set one, okay? So all we are trying to say is go back to your original data frame, which is my DF, and keep only the ones where the name, this name unnamed zero, okay? This entries are not equals to set one. This is a way of telling, okay, don't I don't care about set one. So when you do that, and let me open this data frame one again, and you see everything is starting from set two and so on. So this is another way of actually subsetting your, uh, your data frame for uh, your analysis. So now in this tutorial, you looked at how you can actually select specific columns for analysis or subsetting your data frame for uh, by dropping certain columns and also by dropping certain rows. And uh, again, we are still in the process of data handling and data cleaning process and in the next tutorial let's look at data sorting and then grouping and then eventually okay now we have our data frame ready let's go ahead and plot to gain insights and I hope you found this tutorial to be useful please do not forget to subscribe to this channel thank you very much